Hey everyone, it's Coach Matt over here, Primal Athlete Training Center, www.primalatc.com. Guys, we're answering a question today from Ryan Kim. And Ryan Kim, the subject of the email is shot put ro rotational. Now, Ryan says that he started to use the rotational technique, but since his shot put coach doesn't know how to do it, he's pretty much stuck. Uh, he's looked at all, the, all of my rotational videos, and then it, the question kind of takes a turn and he says, but how is Jack O'Gill so good? Uh, he's different. What exercises will help? And pretty much there's like three questions in one. And um, Patrick, I'm sorry, not Patrick, uh, Ryan, I should say, um, there's three kind of questions all rolled up into one. Um, number one, keep on watching those videos keep practicing what you're doing and keep working on your footwork, your technique and putting it all together, making it nice and smooth. That's the best thing that you can do as someone who's just starting out with that ro rotational technique. You're not going to get it overnight. It's certainly something that you might not get in a year. It might take two years. It might take three years of practice, but you will eventually get it. Now as far as training tips and things like that, right now you just have to work the technique. Don't get too involved with any of that crazy stuff, all the drills and everything that you see online. Just work on the technique. Make it feel right for you and make it feel good for you. That kind of leads into the third part of your question, which is Jack, Jack O'Gill. Now, when you take a look at him, okay, he is what I would consider to be a total package for a thrower. Um, having never really seen him in real life, only seeing videos and, and reading articles and things like that, Jacko seems pretty tall, he's very athletic, he's very lean, he's fast, his technique is great, uh, he's got great technique and it works well for him. And that's something that I've said here plenty of times before, but it's something that's worth saying again, is that everyone's technique is going to be a little bit different. None of the best throwers out there have what I would consider textbook form or textbook technique. You know, you look at some of the top throwers in the U.S., you look at Chris Cantwell, you look at Reese Hoffa, you look at Adam Nelson, um, Dan Taylor, some of these other guys, their technique is all different. Their technique has all been created to fit their abilities and vice versa. Their abilities have kind of formulated what they're able to do in the circle. And it's not gonna look that way if you try to do it. If you try to throw like Christian Cantwell, you're probably not gonna throw like Christian Cantwell. If you try to throw like Adam Nelson, you probably won't be as flexible or as athletic to get in that power position that that guy gets into where he's basically just torqued himself, twisted himself back all the way. The same way, Reese Hoffa, the way that he starts out of the back of the circle, if you try to do that, you might lose your balance and you might end up falling or might end up throwing out the rest of your throw. Jack O'Gill is no different. Is Jack O' textbook technique? I wouldn't say so. I mean, his technique is extremely good. His technique is very, very solid. But more than more, more importantly, his technique works for him. He's a great thrower. Throws the heck out of the ball. Um, really explosive. Really powerful. He has the best of everything. He's strong where he needs to be strong. He's fast where he needs to be fast. His technique is great and it works well for him. He's explosive, he's got great balance, and he knows how to compete. He's a great athlete. And that's something to take into account when you look at a guy like that. When you look at any of the top throwers in the world, when you watch them, they are all good athletes. They're fast, they're strong, they're explosive, they're powerful, they have great technique, they have great agility, great coordination, great balance, it all gets wrapped into one total package. And that's why you see a lot of times guys who are really strong not do that well at shot when they're in high school or college. Guys who are really tall not really do that well in shot or discus when they're in high school and college. Guys that are really quick not do that well in shot and discus when they're in high school and college. You have to have a combination of all of them. You have to have all the right ingredients to go into that throw. And that's why when you look at somebody like Jack O'Gill, Ryan, like you did, and he said he looks different or he's different, how's it go so far? His technique works best for him. 
And that's what you have to do, and I've said it before, you have to become a student of the event. I just did it with my athletes. That's why you see all these training tools, the cinder blocks and everything behind me on the ground. We were just in here, we were working on technique. Now, I wouldn't go up to every person and say, you need to make this look like Mac Wilkins. You need to make this look like Jack O'Gill. You need to make this look like Chris Cantwell. Some of them are taller, some of them are shorter, some of them are stronger, some of them are faster. You have to design the technique according to what the athlete's body and the athlete's uh, abilities are. You can't just try to fit a square peg into a round hole, so to speak. You have to make it work for that person. So I hope you guys take that into account. That's the, way, that, that's the reason why a lot of top throwers out there don't look like they're doing everything correctly, but the ball still takes off like crazy. They found a technique that works for them. They've stuck with it over the years. They've mastered their own technique. They're students of their event, and they're making it happen on the world scene. If you guys want to do that, you have to do the same thing. Make it happen on the world scene. All right, guys. Thanks so much for uh, sending in the questions. Now, I got to tell you, track and field season here in the U.S., here in the Northeast, is just about seven and a half weeks away. I uh, took a look at the calendar today. They're starting the week before Thanksgiving, so not the Monday before, actually the Monday before that. So they're starting a whole 10, 11 days before th Thanksgiving this year. So the season's coming up quick. If you haven't been out there practicing, if you haven't been in the weight room lifting, if you haven't been concentrating, now's the time to start. Make sure you check out all the videos that we have here online. Make sure you sign up for the newsletter on primalatc.com. That way you'll be the first line that I let know about any new products, about any new videos, or anything else that's going on here at Primal to help you become a better thrower. Thanks.